This week on SD Links. Welcome to this week's SV Links video. Last week was a huge week for us. We finally got those canoes flipped and rotated, but just like turning over a rock, we found out that there was a lot of junk inside those canoes, excess epoxy. Yeah, we had to <laughs> sand all of that out. So that's what we're gonna get up to this week now that we've seen what's in there. And, uh, but we're gonna do some other things as well besides just uh, the hard labor of uh, sanding all of that out. We're gonna get to work on our dagger boards again and get some of the foam shaved in our jig. And we're gonna show you a new modification we made to our rain catchment system because we had to modify it yet a third time. <laughs> but we'll show that to you. So let's go ahead and get over to the lot and we'll get to sanding. In last week's video, you saw that we were sanding on the inside of the hull, but we knew we wouldn't get it all done. We were just trying to get as much done as we can get before we were reached the weekend where we we're going to flip the hulls. But that means now that the hulls are flipped over, we got to climb inside and finish grinding off all of that excess squeeze out. So it's time for us to suit up yet again into our suits here and then go into the dust. Well, it's a little bit breezy again today. Gentle breeze. So we're putting up a uh, tenting area over the part of the hole we're sanding to keep the dust in. So we'll be inside in a moment. And this will be uh, day one of at least three to finish sanding the insides of both of our uh, canoes. But we're on a mission because the sooner we get these things sanded, the sooner we can get the fiberglass on the inside. And the sooner we get to fiberglassing, the sooner we can start putting the bulkheads across and assembling the boat. So even though this is a nasty job, we have a lot of motivation to get this done because we want to get to those bulkheads and we want to get it in two weeks. And our biggest problem is we've got those four days of rain coming over the weekend. So we're going to lose a day or so. But again, we're not going to lose all of them because we're going to go work on the dagger boards again on the first two days, Friday and Saturday, and try to get those dagger boards uh, shaved into shape. And then, um, Monday we might even be glassing them. We'll see how we get to, how far we get. And then we'll be back to work here at the lot on Tuesday of the following week. And hopefully that week we can get to glassing the inside of these canoes. All right, time to go. This is our little hut, which we put up over the area we're gonna sand and it drapes down inside of the hull over there so that the dust is pretty much contained inside. And uh, we'll sand that area and just move this down nine or so feet, sand the next area and uh, continue on for three days.
All right, I got the first section done. Time to move this down. You ready down there? We'll give it a try. You stop for a sec. Let's pull this over. So here is what we just sanded off. You can see this squeeze out is gone all the way pretty much over to there. So the first, oh, I'll call it 10. It's probably a little less than 10, but uh, about 10 feet. And uh, we only have to do that three more times because we already did some sanding. So three more of these and then we get to do that hole. Okay, so what's the good news about that? This is the bad hole. That's the easy one. We already did most of it a long time ago. So there's just a little bit of cleanup on that one. This is the one with the major squeeze out. So it's going to one that's going to take us the longest. If we can get half of this one done today and half of it tomorrow, we can spend Wednesday on the other one. And that should be able to do in one day. And that'll get us done in the three days that we have to do this. So Brian's finishing up just uh, cleaning and vacuuming up the inside of the area that we worked on last over here. And that's all we're going to get to today because the wind's starting to come up a little bit. So we don't want to blow any dust anywhere. So uh, we'll do that tomorrow. But while he's finishing that up, I got the laser level out because I wanted to see just how bad off we are on the hulls this direction, you know, with these cradles. We did the best we could, but we wanted to, you know, to make it so it was going to come out level, but we were going to find out once we put them on the cradles here. So let me show you where it came out. You can see this green line and here I'll, I'll, I'll bump it so it moves a little bit. You see that it'll settle right down perfectly level at the water line. And over here, exactly the same perfectly level already now a little bit of that might be luck but we also did a lot of work to make this come out level ahead of time hoping it would for example when we poured those metal those cement pads we used laser leveling to make sure that the cement on all four of them was exactly the same height and when we created the cradles we measured to make sure that they were the right heights again and uh, as you saw when we built them, we built them on top of the hull so it fit the hull very nicely. And through all those different measurements, we hoped they would be close. But the fact is they're exactly, perfectly right on level. We don't have to do anything perfect. So that is awesome. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention here. I don't think we showed you this, but before we put these cradles down, we put a layer of glass all the way around the bottom and up the side here. And you may not be able to see it, but this is also a layer of glass over the whole surface. And this is just another layer overlapping it. And this one's a layer overlapping it to seal the, the edge up here. Uh, but the idea is when we put this last layer on over the whole bottom, we actually put on another piece of plywood, not just the MDF. The MDF is here, and then we added a piece of plywood on all four of them and then glassed it. And this is to keep any rain that hits this uh, cement and runs under here from soaking into this MDF. So right now it can't because now there's a layer of, of fiberglass and then a layer of, of uh, plywood and then the MDF. So that's going to work and it's going to keep it from swelling on us. Day two of the sanding extravaganza on the porthole. And... Uh, We've moved our little hut down to the third position now. And uh, we've probably got maybe one and one and a half to go because we already sanded the bow uh, when it was upside down. So uh, we're gonna have some help today. Uh, in about an hour or so, uh, our buddy and crew member Nick is going to arrive and we'll put him to work sanding. Sounds good to me, but um, It'll be a big help. So Brian and I are gonna start out right now and uh, get some done. We've been sanding all day. You can hear behind me, uh, Nick's still at it. 
he's a machine. Uh, but we're nearly done with the, that section, the last one on this hull. Let's see if I can peek in on Nick here. Day three of sanding, and Brian and I are here today to finish off the very bow area, which is just a little bit, so that won't take too long. We finished sanding the porthole finally, the whole thing's done, and uh, we grabbed lunch, and now we're going to start sanding on the starboard hull. And if you recall, and I'll show you a quick image of what that squeeze out was like on the porthole before we started, about right here. And uh, now I'm going to show you what the inside of the starboard hull looks like, because if you recall, we did this quite a bit differently. And so the amount of squeeze out here is exceedingly less. This isn't really all that much that we're gonna have to deal with on here. So this should go a lot faster. So we'll see how it goes uh, right now. It's going pretty well so far. Uh, we've gone just about to the end of this hut right here now. Almost halfway and it took about an hour. So I figure another hour and a half we'll be at the front. Almost done with another major job. Both canoes sanded out on the inside. We're gonna move this hut to the end here and do the last little bit and we're done. Let's see where we're at here. Yeah, that's about it. That was a hot and nasty job to do that whole hole today and the little bit of the other one. I am baking. I think I lost maybe, you know, 10 pounds. Of course, it's all water weight. Uh, Brian's right up at the nose right now on his side, so he'll be done in just a minute or two. And uh, we're done with the grinding out of these two holes and not a moment too soon. I'm tired of that one. I want to move on to better and bigger and more fun things than grinding off excess epoxy. We've only done a preliminary vacuuming of some of this. When he's done, I'm going to vacuum the rest of it. This is just to get the majority of the dust out. Obviously, we're going to vacuum it yet again and then blow it out with a compressor and then clean it out with alcohol and all that good stuff until this is very clean. Before we do the, the final uh, cleaning on this though, we're gonna go through and check and make sure that there aren't any little spots that we missed or something. There's like one right there. But for the most part, this is now smooth. And uh, generally ready for the next phase, which is going to be filling some little gaps. For example, Right there, you can see a little gap that we need to fill. So we'll fill those gaps in, let that set up for a day. And then uh, this hole is ready to have our fiberglass layer put in. And that'll be next week that we uh, do both of these holes uh, and get the fiberglass layer in because that's the only thing left to really finish off these holes to the point where we can put the bulkheads in. So we're so close to that now. The biggest job and the most difficult job between us and doing that was sanding these out and that's done. That's Brian knocking dust off of his mask over there. Anyway, so uh, it's uh, good that it's done. I'm happy and uh, it was a nasty job, but it's over and uh, the epoxy work is not very difficult and that'll go fast and easy. 
and the fiberglassing uh, won't be really difficult either. So uh, now we won't have to fare the inside of this because not like the outside of the hole, we're trying to get this perfect finish on it. On the inside, once we glass it, we're going to be putting peel ply down to give it a nice surface. And then when we're ready, we'll pull the peel ply and we'll use a bilge paint to paint this rather than fairing it. And so this is not weeks of fairing work to go here. This is just really uh, some uh, fill in some epoxy and get our layer of fiberglass on with peel ply and then it'll be much later that we do the bilge paint. All right, so we've got our jig set up here and we've got things as level as we can get them. And this is ready to slide, as you can see, it works very well. Easy, easy sliding. So I think we're ready to hook up the router and start sawing off some of this. Good news is it's working out pretty well. So far, so good. Sort of getting into a groove here. Brian's vacuuming while I readjust this and we do a stripe. Now, one thing we've already decided is we tried to cut right through the red cedar blocks, but it just doesn't want to go through there that easily. So we're just skipping those and I'll grind those down by hand with the sander to the right shape. We're just going to do the foam with this. Yeah, that's, this is about how I expected it to come out. Yeah, it's rough, but we'll take a sander to that a little bit. And then remember, we can fill all this a little with a little bit of fairing, and then we're going to glass bass all over the top of it, so it'll all be great when it's done. Looking good. All right, onward. Well, that completes this side of it. A certain amount of fairing we have to do later, but uh, this is the general shape now. So now we have to flip this thing over and do all over again on the other side. Today we're kind of prototyping our rain catchment system. And it isn't like what I showed you in a previous video about that. And the reason is, is that because we were missing some materials for the dagger boards and had to use offcuts to create the dagger boards. That used up a lot of our offcuts. And to build the rain catchment system all the way around that huge cabin top it would be a lot of this uh, foam from the cutoffs and we just don't have that much to use on that. There's, we have some left but we need it for other things. And so I started working on a different methods of creating the rain catchment system not using cutoffs. And one of those involved putting a piece of PVC underneath and stuff, but glassing that in and stuff was very difficult and would take a lot of labor. So I tried to come up with a better way of doing it that would be uh, less work. And so we're going to give that a test today, and I'll show you how it's going to work. We're going to use this really crappy piece of cutoff right here that we've used for uh, various tests already, like uh, coring it out and stuff like that, but it'll be fine. Uh, just imagine that this is a piece of the roof, and we're just going to take a little slice of it here and uh, cut this off. So the rain catchment system will be running this way across the roof, which will of course be much larger than this. So we're going to um, cut this off and we're going to create a gap of about oh, two inches or uh, 10 centimeters or some, th somewhere around there. And uh, then I'll show you how we're going to how we're going to create the trough differently in a moment. So the first thing Brian's going to cut this about the distance back that we want the rain catchment So we'll have cut this off. Now, for the real roof, what we'll do is we'll take out a two inch section. So we would, we would cut another piece off, but it doesn't really matter for this test. We'll just pretend we took it out and it's 
going to be out here. We just want enough space that your hand can comfortably come inside of here uh, to grab a hold. And to me, we don't we want the smallest amount we can get that you can get in there without rubbing your fingers on it. So somewhere about there be fine. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is uh, we would take a router and route these sharp edges off right here so that the glass can uh, roll across these things. Uh, I'm going to show you that because we don't actually have our router here right this second. So I'm just going to take a grinder and grind this off for this just this test. But we'll, in the real one, we'll take a router and run it along the edge. You get a perfect uh, uh, radius on there. So this is our little test piece. Remember that the roof's going to be way longer than this little test piece. And what we're going to do is we're going to glass this little tab there and we're going to take a piece of PVC here and we're going to insert it into here. And we're not just going to let it hang. We're going to tilt it back slightly. And what that does is it gives us a, a bit of a grip right here. And then uh, because these are beveled, this goes around these curves really easily. And later we'll be able to flip it over and put coves on the other side and glass from the other side as well. Right now we're just going to glass this top piece on and see how that works out. We want this to set up pretty quickly because it's just a quick test and uh, we don't want to wait a day for it to set up. So we're just going to use West System for this because it'll set up faster and we won't need much. That should do it. 50 milliliters of that. 10 more of this. For the hardener. Good to go. Good enough for test purposes. Now what we're going to do is let this set up for just a little bit. Well, I'll try this, but I'm afraid it'll pull it. No, not too bad. Okay. So there's our little example with our, the pipe's about halfway pulled back. And uh, this is just a weird little thing here. We won't have to do this on the boat. I'll make a little uh, custom made holders to hold the pipe at the right distance and such. But for this test, all we need is to get it to the right position and let it set up a little bit. But uh, that worked out really easily to put that on there. And one of the nice things is, is that this is fully accessible to clean this track if we get stuff in there and you know we will. Ryan just mentioned that uh, who knows we might get a flying fish or a squid in there uh, but there's certainly going to be salt and other kinds of, of dirt like when we're going through the Red Sea and all that dust from the desert is blowing. It's going to collect in places like this and we need to be able to take a brush and just clean this out easily and so this is really accessible. Uh, nothing hidden down in there and the curves from the uh, beveling are working nicely on the on the glass. And remember, we're going to glass it from the other side as well. And I'm not sure if we're even going to put a, a second layer on here. But we only need this first layer to get the shape. Once that sets up, we can glass it as we feel like uh, in the future. So uh, we're just going to let this set up for a bit now. And uh, Brian and I are going to actually get to work on the boat. Well, that was a lot of sure work. Sure was. <laughs> but thanks to uh, Brian, Nick, and Phil, both canoes are now sanded. Yeah, we got that done and uh, we got that dagger board, uh, first one at least, uh, shaved. And um, we'll see how that uh, new rain catchment system we showed you comes out. Uh, I am hopeful though, and it seems to be working quite well. We'll see how many layers it takes to get strong enough. Now, next week, we're going to fiberglass the starboard hull at least, and hopefully uh, prep and possibly get to the starboard hull as excuse me the port hull as well so uh, we'll get to one for sure though and so we're going to glass that entire thing in as we're prepping to get the bulkheads put in and start the assembly of this boat we're really pushing hard to get to it so thank you guys for watching this video we do appreciate you and uh, of course we also appreciate our patrons who help fund this project and uh, we'll see you next week. Yes, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. See you then. Bye.